This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. If I only listen to the band, listen to the band. And welcome back to the show. This is CL650. You're listening to Boomer Life. And today we have Dr. Ted Venema here from Next Gen Hearing. And our special guest today is Mandy Fish, registered audiologist and owner of Next Gen Hearing Clinic in West Vancouver at Bellevue and 24th in Dundre. That's right. Right. So let's kind of walk through what happens when somebody comes in. And, and sometimes, uh, Dr. Venema, we've talked about this, sometimes they get dragged in. And, uh, and sometimes they come willingly. So you finally get somebody to admit, and that's probably a big big uh, hurdle for many, that they have a hearing issue. So when they come into you, what do you do? Okay, well, you're quite right. Denial is, is one of the symptoms we see most, and it often takes family members um, to encourage our hard of hearing clients to come in in the first place. So when they come in, we immediately make them feel comfortable at home, and we start by getting information from them. Mm -hmm. And this involves a detailed case history. So we would get an idea of why they came in. And they'd often say, my wife made me. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then we'll look at their hearing loss history. Oh, well, who's more stubborn, men or women, to, to admit it? I'm sorry to say, but definitely men. And <laughs> I am outnumbered here, but definitely You're men. Right. Men wait longer than women before they come in. But it's the for same with assistance. men on everything medical. They wait. Yeah. They don't go to the doctor as much. Nope. Yeah. Yes, and we really we are trying to reduce that time frame that it takes for people to come in. Yes. So when they come in and we get the information about their hearing loss history, it would incorporate things such as when did you first notice the hearing loss? Mm -hmm. What was the onset related to? Was it a specific incidence? Which ear is better? And then we spend a fair amount of time discussing which areas they have the most difficulty hearing. Mm -hmm. For example, in crowds yeah. or in group settings and noisy gatherings or on the television. And this is really crucial information because we refer back to this information when we're making any recommendations about hearing aids and rehabilitation or when we're selecting hearing aids. So now, that's crucial. Now, Dr. Yeah. Venema, we've had a few shows with some uh, different manufacturers and mm -hmm. some are much better at one-on-one -on -one conversation, others are much better at, at eliminating background noise, right? So that's the job, is to decide which maybe product is best suited, Yeah, right? Kate, this, what she's mentioning is the case history. Yeah. And that's where we get to know the client and find out his or her biggest needs. And, and, and then we do the hearing test to right. find out, okay, let's talk turkey here about what does your hearing really reveal? What, so, what's the facts? And, and that is done I at your location. Absolutely. So we go through the entire process, mm -hmm. but the first part of the process is, is getting information mm -hmm. from the client. Once we're looking at the hearing loss history, we then look at the medical history, which includes the ear history and the general health history. So do they have any ringing in their ears? Do they have a history of ear infections? Have they had ear surgery before? And then we review medical conditions or medic medications that could impact your hearing. And all of this is important, especially recently in light of research that has shown many comorbidities or many associated conditions with hearing loss, such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease and, and even now more recently dementia or cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. Once we have that information, we look at the hearing aid history. Have they worn hearing aids before? Um, you know, how successful were they if they have worn hearing aids and when last did they wear hearing aids? And so we continue. Once we get all of that information, we're then able to go ahead and do the hearing test. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and what happens then? Okay. Would you like to get that bit too? Sure. <laughs> the person is situated in a sound booth mm -hmm. that's very, uh, that blocks out outside background noise. Kind of like our studio here. Yeah. Right? Quite, quite a bit like that. And, and you're wearing a set of headphones and tones are presented by the audiologist or hearing instrument practitioner from what's called an audiometer. That person's on the other side of a, of a glass wall, usually. And the tones are delivered through the headphone, and you're asked to raise a hand or push a button whenever you hear the tone. And what we try and find is the softest level it takes for you to hear that tone. And that's called your hearing threshold. Then we move to the next tone, like a higher pitched. And so we're testing your hearing sensitivity from bass to mid to treble pitches all the way across. And that part of the test is called pure tone testing. It's done separately for the right ear and for the left ear. Just like in optometry, each eye is tested mm -hmm. individually. 
That's going to give us our overall what we call. But unlike the eye chart, you can't guess. You actually have to hear. It. <laughs> uh, we have ways and means of making sure that you are responding correctly. Yeah. So, so that's what's called your audiogram. The results mm -hmm. are are written on it, so that shows you decibels required to just barely hear all the different pitches. Sure. The second part of a test involves. Now let's look at what's happening with your hearing regarding speech. What's the softest that we can make speech sounds before you can't hear them anymore? What's a comfortable loudness level for you to hear conversational speech? What's a level that you find to be too loud? What's uncomfortably loud? All of this information is used to help program the hearing aids in question. But I've had hearing tests where you have to repeat words. Exactly. Do you do that as well? Yes, what we try and do in that test is, let's find out how clear you hear, my dear. Mm. When we're presenting little words, a, a, at a comfortable loudness level. What's your clarity? We don't go, see the big black cat. Well, it'll be, say the word, tree. Say the word, up. It'll just be no context. We're mm. testing how, what's the clarity of your hearing? Because that will really help regarding counseling. Like some people, when they can hear the sound, the speech, they can't always distinguish what the word is. Mm. And you, if you, I always like your examples. Give us your example. Well, you know, when you, you know, all of hearing loss, the, the trouble with treble, and most people have treble hearing loss. That's, that, that's what uh, the hearing loss in the elder is usually called presbycusis, like mm -hmm. sounds like Presbyterian, you know, church of the elders, hearing of the elders. And so when you've got trouble hearing treble, you can't distinguish what the word is. Words like hat, fat, cat, bat, sat, they all have ah, ah, but it's the, it's those little lip sounds, the so the, the sound in speech like S, S, C-H, CH, if I yell the word, the name Paul, what's the loudest part? It's AW. The, the P isn't that loud. Yeah. You see what it I'm could be ball. Yeah. So the person with hearing loss has difficulty hearing what did they say, dishes mm -hmm. or fishes. And mm -hmm. so the person's always looping backward with the context to find out what they must have been talking about. And that's when your eyes come in. Yes. When you're talking to somebody. Well, that's you the can oldest see hearing aids. Yeah, P is di <laughs> different than ball, right? You yes. can see that. But in a booth, when you're just hearing it, exactly. you, you can't cheat. Right. Mm -hmm. So when a person has very poor speech discrimination or ability to distinguish words that rhyme, that's going to tell us, hey, even with hearing aids making the sounds audible to you, it's not going to bring your hearing back to when you were 10 years old. And right. that's where counseling is so important in the hearing aid delivery system to people. So you take the first test, which is the tones, yep. then you take the other test. And what do you get at the end? What is it called? It's the audiogram. Mm -hmm. It's your hearing test results. Right. And it's basically those two parts, pure tone testing, what mm -hmm. we call, and speech testing. Now, a neat thing in the tone testing is we also try and find out what kind of hearing loss do you have. Do you have hearing loss like little kids get with earaches? Like, is your, are your middle ears infected, your eardrum? And have you got an infection in the ear? That's going to block the passage of sound getting to where it's got to go. Mm. That's medically treatable. And how do you know the difference? Well, that's the... Um, I'm glad you <laughs> asked me that question. <laughs> we take headphones on mm. the ears and we measure how loud it took for you to hear all the different tones. Right. Then we take the headphones off and we put a little black box about a, a cubic inch... Just a, and it's on a headband. Now feel that behind your ear is this bone. It's kind of a round bone. You can feel it behind there. We put that little box on that bone, right behind the ear, the mastoid bone, and we present the tones again. Now, how loud did we need to have the tones in this manner mm. for you to just barely hear? When I bypass the eardrum and bypass the ear infection and deliver the tone straight through the bone, they're getting to where they've got to go. Was there a difference? Was your hearing better? And if your hearing was better that way, we go, aha, you've got a problem of sound getting to where it's got to go. You know what I remember as a kid, because you, you speak and you hear your voice, yeah. right? Yeah. And the voice you hear is through your head. 
It's yes. through that bone. Yep. Because it's, it's not bone. always coming out of your mouth and through your ear. Correct. You hear it through your skull, right? You hear it both ways. Yeah, well, both ways. But yeah. the interesting thing is the first time kids hear their voice recorded and played yeah. back, they always say, is that what I sound like? Exactly. <laughs> because the way you perceive sound is different verse through your skull well, versus yeah. your ear, right? When you're hearing yourself in a recording, you are hearing for the first time your voice as others hear you. Yes. Because you hear yourself talking through the air, the sound wave go through the air from your mouth mm -hmm. to your ears, mm -hmm. but also, as you say, through the bone of your skull. Yeah, right. Well, so it's, not, it's not so hard now because everybody's got a phone. Right. And they make videos of themselves. But I remember I was probably around 10 or so uh -huh. when I first my uh, first heard my own voice. And I was, I was I, I can't believe that was me. Yeah. You yeah. sound a little bit tinnier <laughs> yeah. to yourself. Yeah, a little bit less rich. And look at you now, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I talk for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked out well. Yeah, it Except did. my ears are plugged up because I have a cold. But uh, uh, oh, well. I can still hear. Yeah. Um, all right. So what, what do you then do with that audiogram? We have about a minute left. Okay. And then we'll get into the next steps. But basically... Uh, what do you do with that? Well, if, uh, as Mandy says, when you're taking a case history and then you look at the audiogram, you want to know, okay, do I need to refer to a physician? Sure. Is the hearing loss medically treatable? Do it, or is the way that you heard through that little box no better than uh, the way you heard through the headphones? And if that's the case, you have the most common hearing loss in the world. It's due to damage of these tiny little hair cells in your cochlea, which is a snail-shaped inner ear. Mm -hmm. And that kind of hearing loss is permanent. You can't fix it. But, but it, you can, can, it can be from age and also yes. from uh, external noise. Correct. Right? You've identified the two most common causes. Mm -hmm. One being age, which just makes you better. Mm -hmm. And the other is, is <laughs> noise-induced hearing loss, yeah. which is so preventable. Yeah. Wearing your earplugs. And they both cause treble hearing loss. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to continue our conversation. That's the voice of Dr. Ted Venema from Next Gen Hearing. And our special guest is Mandy Fish, registered audiologist and owner of the Next Gen Hearing Clinic in West Vancouver. We'll pick up the conversation next. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.